Well, welcome. We're glad that you're joining with us today and have been joining with us for worship. And now uh, Wes and I are getting ready to, to bring the word to you this morning. So let's pray. Lord, thanks so much for today. Thank you for your blessings to us, your goodness to us. Thank you for your word, and we thank you that your word is faithful and true, and that it speaks to us. Help us to bring that word today, and may people hear your voice through, through Wes and I. Be honored in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to read from Psalm 105. We're going to read the first uh, portion of that, of that uh, psalm, Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. Well, Wes, thanks for inviting me up here today. Um, I think this is about the sweetest room in the whole church. I, I do like my study a whole lot, but I, I love your worship space up here. And Do you remember what you do up here? Yeah, you know, it's been a while since we've gotten together with all of our students and leaders up here, but we've had a lot of great times of worship, great times looking into God's Word, and uh, we just look forward to getting back together again and enjoying community. I know I miss a lot of the students, seeing them face-to-face, -face, the leaders as well, they're awesome. Uh, we just look forward to getting back together soon. I imagine you do. I can't imagine that, that you would think otherwise. So, Well, today we're going to be talking about remembering, and I'm kind of curious. How good your memory? Do you ever forget anything? <laughs> uh, honestly, my memory is a terrible, uh, especially during this whole pandemic staying at home thing. Every day just seems to kind of like be Groundhog Day almost. Like it, just, <laughs> it keeps on repeating itself almost and they blur together. And so my memory was already terrible to begin with, but now it's it's just it's just terrible. But I will share in a minute, I'll share a story um, of one memory that, you know, things, things, an example of how I forgot something. My, my wife, Lauren, reminded me of how terrible my memory really is. <laughs> We look forward to that. Um, I, I would tell you a story about forgetting, but, but I can't remember it. So <laughs> let's just dig in here this morning. Psalm 105 tells us to remember. In, in verse 5 it says, Remember the wonders he has done. The Bible tells us to remember the wonders of God or the mighty acts of God. And when I, when I read that, my mind darts around to different places in Scripture. It darts around to, say, that great mighty act when God rescued the Israelites from, from Egypt. So time after time, um, Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says, Thus says the Lord, let my people go. And of course, each time Pharaoh says, No, I'm not going to let people go. In fact, who's this God you're talking about? I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not going to let your people go. So time after time it happens until the final plague hits, hits Egypt and then Pharaoh says, get out of here. And so Moses leads the people of Israel out of Egypt. But of course they end up at, at the Dead Sea there. And, and as they end up at the sea, um, they, there they are with the sea before them and Pharaoh coming up behind them, the people are crying out, why have you brought us out here just to die? And Moses cries out to God, God splits the sea. He splits the sea, and there it is. And the Israelites walk through the sea as if walking on dry ground. And then, of course, after they get through, uh, Pharaoh and his horsemen and chariots try to do the same, and well, God wipes them out. He, he destroys, And he lets them know that God is their God. He's their Redeemer, the mighty acts of God, one of his wonders. Ah, you keep reading through scripture and you see all kinds of stories. I, I think of David. 
he was a flawed person, but he was still a man of great faith. And you think of him going out to fight that Goli that Goliath, that giant. So he goes out after after Goliath, and and Goliath is just hurling insults and 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 just spewing this 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 wrath and. David says to him, I come to you in the name of the Lord, and this day the world will know that there is a God in Israel. And so we are to remember the, the mighty acts of God, and look what God has done. Remember those things. Yeah, and I think remembering is an important part of our relationship with God, um, to the point where he actually commands us to remember. We see an example of him commanding this um, when he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses and the Israelites. Uh, he said, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe, observe the Sabbath day. So we're commanded to remember what God has done for us. And I think it's no coincidence that remembering is directly tied to observing the Sabbath day. Uh, I think it's important for us just to be still before God, to, to slow down and just to remember the mighty things that he has done for us, the amazing ways that he's blessed us. Uh, in Psalm 111, it says, Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. So they're pondered, they're thought about intentionally. And I think over the past few months, we've had a great opportunity to just be still mm. and just to recognize and remember what God has done in our lives and how he's worked through us. And I think during this pandemic, it's easy to focus on the negative of all the things going on around us um, that we kind of actually over, it overlooks the positive of things that are going on and seeing what God is doing. And I hope that when we look back over um, this time that we remember how God was drawing families together. You know, there's more times of families spending time at the dinner table, enjoying a meal together. Um, hopefully we remember how we were drawn closer to God um, together as a family. Hopefully we look back and we see um, how the church family came together. We were calling each other, checking in and making sure all of our needs were met and just being the family of God that we're called to be. And uh, another example of uh, remembering would be to remember you know, how we came together as a church family to help out those families in need in our community through the food drive. Um, so even in the middle of life's storms, we can see God's hand at work and how he's using each and every single one of us. And we want to remember those times where God is working and how he is using us. Remember. Remember. The, the Bible is emphatic about it. And it also states it the other way around. It says remember, but it also says do not forget. Uh, it, it means essentially the same thing, but God puts it both ways. Remember what he has done. Do not forget. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Be careful that you remember. Be careful that you do not forget. But it seems to me, Wes, it's so easy to forget. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it is very easy to forget. And uh, my wife, Lauren, can share with you countless examples of me forgetting something. But there, there was one example, I think, that stood out above all the rest. Um, while Lauren and I were still dating at the time, uh, I went out to eat with some friends, and she gave me a phone call. And I answered it and was talking with her, and I was sharing with her that I was eating with some friends. And she goes, oh, are, are you celebrating anything? And I said, nope, nope, just out to eat with some friends, just hanging out, having a good time. And, she, and then she gave me that daunting you know, repeat of the question that makes you realize that you're forgetting something, that you're just missing out on the whole point. And uh, she said, are you sure you're not missing out or you're not forgetting something? Like maybe, uh, you know, a one year dating anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, you know, I froze. And now I'm just trying to wreck my brain. How can I fix this? How can I save a little bit of face? And in that moment, there's nothing you can really do. <laughs> so I just said, Hey, honey, happy, happy anniversary. And so the, the funny thing of it is actually when you look, we look back at, it, at that moment, um, she knew that I forgot because she knows how forgetful I am. It was later on in the evening and I hadn't said anything yet. But she was with her friends and she had her phone and she had it on speakerphone. So they were all sharing in that moment of me forgetting. And so it gets brought up time and time again about my forgetfulness. And so, yeah, it unfortunately is very easy, easy to forget for sure. 
I'm glad Lauren still invited you to come up this way, and she still wanted you to come with us. <laughs> she, she shows me a lot of grace, <laughs> a lot of times, all the time. so much grace all the time. Remember, do not forget, there, there is a, a man who lived a long time ago, Augustine, and he said this, I call upon you, O my God, my mercy, who made me and did not forget me. Now listen to this. Though I forgot you. You didn't forget me, God, but, but I forgot you. And I think most of us can relate to that to some degree. It's, it's not that God is obliterated from our memory, but we get so caught up in everyday life. We get so involved in everything. Sometimes we act as if we have forgotten God and we go uh, along our, our way and we just act like we don't remember him at all. And, we need things to jar our memories. Yeah, there, there's several examples of think, times where I've had you know, great intimate moments with God that I've forgotten. Um, an example of that is you know, when I go back home to Ohio where my family is, I uh, often drive through the small little town that I grew up in. It's, it's one stoplight in the middle of nowhere. Um, nobody's gonna accidentally come across the little town of Gibsonburg, but it's where I grew up. And when I look and I drive through Gibsonburg, I'm reminded of so many childhood memories that I'd forgotten. Uh, one example of that being um, there was a park near where I grew up that was, that was so fun. I loved going there pretty much every day as a kid. Um, and the reason I loved going there is because there were so many trees that you could climb. But there was one tree that I remember that I felt challenged to climb because it was the tallest, biggest tree. Um, to the point where I had to move t uh, tables underneath the branches in order to jump up and grab one to climb it. <laughs> And so I would do that, I climbed to the very top of the tree, and at that time, I would just spend, spend time in prayer with God. Mm. It was a very um, you know, intimate time, I feel like, where I'm up there, nobody knows I'm up there, it's just me alone with God, looking out at all the things I can see from that height, and I'm being amazed by it, and uh, just spending a quiet time with God. And so driving through and seeing that one tree reminded me of that memory mm. that I had forgotten as a child. Mm. It's good to have those occasions that jar your memory, that help you remember. Uh, a few months ago, I, I was honored and blessed. Um, I had, I've grown up in, in the small town of New Era, of course, and, and for several years, in my high school years, I worked on this farm, the Dykstra farm. And about a year and a half ago, I saw Mrs. Dykstra at, at kind of a sad, well, at a very sad occasion. It was at another funeral uh, for her son that, that I grew up with. But anyway, she, she said, uh, I want you to do my funeral. So a few months ago, we had that funeral. And when we had that funeral, it was, it was really a blessing because you see all these people that you haven't seen for years I've got to admit, some of them I couldn't remember their names. Some of them uh, I recognized them. Um, and some of them I didn't even recognize. But then we started telling stories and we started reminding each other. And I think that's why God gives us community to help jar those memories, to keep remembering things. And some of those memories that you talk about, uh, it sounds funny almost, but remembering or God speaking to you as you climb a tree. And I think of the times out there working in those orchards and fields. And you know what? Those were really good times when you could hear, I could hear the voice of God. And, but it's good to have people around to help remind us. So God gives us community. I think he also gives us um, things. For example, I love this, Numbers chapter 15. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites, say to them, Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at so that you will remember all the commands of the Lord. So in ancient days, Israel had these garments and then they had their tassels hanging on them. And I've had it a number of times when I've traveled different places, you don't see it around here, but you'll see a Jewish person, not all of them, of course, but some Jewish people, they're, they're, I've seen men in their expensive suits, and then they have these tassels hanging down and identifying them as a Jew, but also saying, remember the Lord. And, and I think that's, that's such an interesting thing. 
Of course, in Jesus' day, then, then he warns them. He says, that's a good gift God has given us to wear those tassels, but now you guys are making them longer and longer, and you're becoming spiritual show-offs, and the Lord didn't like that. Sometimes we take the good gifts God has given us, and, and we don't always use them right. But he gives us things to help us remember him. Yeah, and there are several examples throughout Scripture of where God giving us visible things to remind us of the great works that he has done. An example in the Old Testament, we see um, the Passover. And we, we remember how God liberated the Israelites from the oppressive uh, hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Uh, in Exodus 12, it says, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So the Passover is a time of uh, remembering how God is faithful, how he is in control. Um, and it was just a reminder to the Israelites that he is the one who, who liberated them. He is the one who brought them freedom when they were enslaved to the Egyptians. So we see that in the Old Testament and New Testament, we see an example of that um, in the Lord's Supper. It's a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made. You know, how his body was beaten, how his blood was spilt. And we take communion and we eat the bread and we uh, drink the juice. And it's a reminder of the grace that we see um, that God has shown to us through Jesus, how he was crucified. Um, and through that, we, have, we see God's faithfulness and we see the redeeming work of Jesus um, in our lives. And so the Passover and the um, Lord's Supper is a great reminder of what God has done for us throughout our life. Mm. Yeah, remember the wonders he has done. All those things he uses to help us remember. And he gives us special days too. Um, as Christians, we observe Christmas and Good Friday and Easter. And we just uh, observe Dissension Day and Pentecost will be celebrated. We remember the great things God has done in the past. Uh, he gives us those days to help us remember. Now this week is Memorial Day weekend. It's a national holiday, it's not a religious holiday. But I certainly think it's, it's a holiday Christians can grab hold of and remember um, twofold. Remember the great things God has done for us, but remember too what God has done for us as a nation and to give thanks for the blessings we've received for, from Him. Uh, to remember those who have gone before us, remember those who have served, and remember those who have sacrificed. Memorial Day is a great occasion for Christians to have God jar our memory and, and remember what he has done for us through people. Yeah, absolutely. And God's blessing on our nation is evident throughout our, our nation's history. And it's because of the sacrifice of those who are serving and those who have served in generations before us, we get to enjoy the freedoms of of uh, worshiping our great God and to be able to go and share the message of, of hope and salvation freely to those who God has called us to share it with. Um, and the freedom, the gifts that we get to enjoy, you know, they came at a price. Um, they, they came at a very big sacrifice. And the men and women who are serving have sacrificed so much for us to enjoy these freedoms and these gifts. Um, and so it's amazing to see God's hand at work and how he has put people in place throughout our, our nation's history. He has put documents out there to help preserve um, what you know, the founding fathers have put in place. And it allows for us just to celebrate our great God. And we see the Christian roots throughout our nation's history. And so for all those who have sacrificed and for all those who are currently sacrificing, we, you know, we, say, we say thank you for that sacrifice they're doing for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, we're told repeatedly in Scripture, remember, remember the mighty acts that God has done. Do not forget the Lord your God. We're told that over and over again. Remember, remember, remember. And he gives us things to help us remember. In the sacraments, the Lord's Supper, baptism, remember, remember. He gives us special days, but we still forget. We still forget so easily. Listen to this example, Judges 8. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. That is, they became idol worshipers, idolaters. They set up Baal, Bareth, as their God, and did not remember the Lord their God who had rescued them. 
even after God himself had rescued them, even though the Lord had done this for them, they forgot the Lord. They did not remember what God had done for them. And, you know, so often it's easy for us to forget. But here's, here's the amazing news from God is that he remembers. Mm, mm, mm. And we see that in Psalm 105, verse 8 that we read. He said, he remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. Mm. So God remembers his covenant forever, and he remembers his promises, and he keeps his promises. Uh, we see throughout Scripture that he made several covenants with, with his people and he kept those covenants, and he was found faithful in doing that. And so that should bring us um, joy. It should bring us peace and comfort, knowing that our God makes promises and that he is faithful in keeping those promises. And, uh, you know, he is better at remembering the promises that he made than we are at remembering those things. And we know that he has never forgotten any of those promises. He has fulfilled them. Um, and so nothing is going to stand in the way of God fulfilling the promises that he has made. Um, time won't prevent him from keeping those promises, nor will any person or any power of this world. He's going to be found faithful in keeping his promises that he has made. Um, and we also see that God remembers his people. So he remembers his, his promises, and he keeps his promises, but he also remembers his people. And we see that example with Noah in Genesis 8. He says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. So even after God poured out his judgment uh, on the earth by bringing the flood, God was still um, remembering Noah, remembering his family, remembering the animals. And in that act, he was showing grace to Noah. He was showing grace to his family. And uh, you know, God remembers us as well. And he shows us grace each and every single day. We are to remember God, but God remembers us. To me, in the book of Isaiah, God, God almost thunders through the prophet. Listen, Isaiah 44, remember these things, Jacob. And so God is saying to, to Israel, to Jacob, to his people, remember me, remember me. For you, Israel, are my servant. I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. And then he says this. I will not forget you. And so remember that. God will not forget you. Last week when I, when I preached, uh, I talked about the fact that you have someone in a high place at the right hand of God who remembers your name, who knows you by name. And he prays for you. And here, here you hear the Lord declare, I will not forget you. It's not like Jesus ever forgets your name when he's, praying for you to God the Father. It's not like God the Father doesn't know who you are and he forgets you and he doesn't know your name. You keep reading in, in Isaiah chapter 49. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Our answer to that is no. We, we think that's no. Although once in a while we hear a horrible story where it happens where a mother forgets his, her child. But we believe that a mother's love for her child is the best type of love, of human love there can be. And it's, we want the answer to be no, a mother can't forget her child. But then the Lord says this, though she may forget, I will not forget you. God will not forget us. Hmm. You know, and it's for our benefit that God remembers. Um, but God also does forget. Hmm. But it's actually for our benefit that he does forget. In Isaiah 43, he says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake and remembers your sins no more. So this is the humbling message that we, that we see throughout Scripture, that mankind is sinful, that we are wicked, and that we stand guilty before a holy and a just God. And so often, many of us, we all could probably um, think of times where we've forgotten God where we've pursued our own passions, pursued our own desires instead of pursuing after God. We've forgotten the many times that God has worked in our lives and we fail to remember what he has done and how he has revealed himself and how he has saved us. So often 
We have sinned against our great God. That's the humbling reality that we all face. But here's the message of the, the amazing message of the gospel. That despite our wickedness, despite our sinfulness, God has shown us grace. God has taken it upon himself to blot out our transgressions. And because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, because of his resurrection from the grave, our sins are forgiven through faith in him. They are blotted out and they are remembered no more. So we remember the great act of mercy and grace that God has shown us, but we also realize that he has forgotten our sin. It has been blotted out and he remembers it no more because of our faith in Jesus and what Jesus did on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. So that's the beautiful message of the gospel. God remembers us, but God forgets, forgives and forgets our sin through Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. And today, we are to remember that. We're to remember what God has done for us through Jesus. We've got to remember the story. We've got to remember that Jesus paid the price once and for all that only he could pay. And also, we've got to remember and share and tell our children, other people, what the Lord has done for us. It's, it's the story of Jesus, but it's also the story of Jesus working in and through our lives. And we've got to remind each other and tell each other and share those stories of how God has watched over us, blessed us, how the Lord has led us to him. And we've got to keep telling those stories. People need to remember and to share those stories. And, and each and every single one of us has a unique story of how God has worked. And we all have responsibility, like you said, to share that. And it's important that we remember how God has worked in and through us, but we also will look forward to what he's going to do in the future, what he's continuing, what his plan is to continually use us and work through us. In Isaiah 43, it says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. So what God has done in the past is great. You know, we recognize that, and we, it's important for us to remember those things. But we also look forward to what he is going to do in the, in the future through us. Um, we don't want to be so focused on the past, the good, the bad, the ugly of the past, and live in those moments and, and then miss out on what God is doing in the present time and in the future. You know, the Israelites, they were delivered um, by God. They were delivered from the Egyptians and delivered from the Babylonians. But God was getting ready to do a new thing. He was getting ready to bring in this Messiah to provide a hope and a future for all mankind. And so the future was far brighter than the Israelites could possibly understand. I think the same is, is true for us. We see in, in Isaiah 65, 17, it says, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. So the things that God is, do, is going to do in the future will be so great that the past will pale in comparison. Mm -hmm. And so this time on earth is temporary. We, we know what God has done. We look forward to what he's going to be doing. But we press on in our relationship with Christ knowing that our future is going to be great. That we know that we're going to spend eternity with God in heaven. We're going to be face to face with Jesus. And that is what we look forward to. That is the, the, the great future that we have ahead. And so we press on in this time remembering what God has done. But we also look to, uh, look to the glorious future that we have with Jesus in heaven one day. Well, one of my favorite verses is from the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, in the Apostle Paul speaking, and uh, he knows his race is about run, and he's, but, but he says, forgetting that which lies behind, I press on. Uh, forgetting what lies behind. Um, what he's talking about is I don't allow the past, my past successes, my past failures, to rule the day. He's not forgetting what God has done for him. But he says, I, I, I'm forgetting what lies behind. The success is the failures. Uh, I, I'm setting that aside and I'm pressing on toward the future. And what that future is, God holds and it's good. The short-term future in my life, the long-term future in eternity. I do think right now a whole lot of people are wrestling with that because we, we are not forgetting what lies behind. We're not forgetting the past. We want things to be the way they used to be. We want to go back to the way things were. And we're eager for that. 
we don't know what the future is going to look like. It might look different in the future than, than it has in the past. We don't know exactly what it'll look like. But we do know that we have the promise of God to, to leave that in God's hands and to press on and to be the people he calls us to be and to do what he wants us to do and to make a difference in his name. And so as much as we want to make life look the way it used to, press on, forget what lies behind, and keep surging forward to do what God's calling us to do and to be the people God wants us to be and the church he wants us to be and, and to let him work in us and through us to his glory. And that's our prayer, that God works through all of us and that he accomplishes much more than we can ask or imagine through the power of his spirit, which is at work in us. It's a great message. And so we remember what God has done and we look forward to what he's going to do and how he's going to continually use us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful for the many ways that you have used us. Each of us uniquely have a story of how you have interacted, how you have used us, how you have revealed yourself to us. I pray you give us the boldness and give us the opportunity to go and share that amazing story of how you have worked. Help us to remember and recall those great acts, the things that you have done. And as we remember those things, Lord, we look forward to what you're going to do in the future. We know that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every single one of us. Help us to fulfill that purpose. Help us to live with that eternal mindset of going in and uh, pointing people to an eternal God that loves them, that cares for them, and help them to realize the need they have for salvation through faith in Jesus. Lord, we're thankful that you forget, that you forget our sins, that you show us forgiveness and that you gave us the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus to come and die on the cross and to rise again three days later. We're thankful for the hope that we have in that message. We're thankful for the, for the blotting out of our sins and transgressions that we couldn't take care of in ourselves, but you took control, that you took it upon yourself to take care of us, to blot our transgressions, to, to, to uh, reveal yourself. And I pray, Lord, that we would remember that that we pursue you, that we would live for you and look forward to what you're going to do. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, remember what God has done. Live in anticipation of what God is going to do and go and go with God and may God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and be gracious to you. May the Lord smile upon you and grant you his peace. Amen.